Hey, what's up, you guys? It's Nicholas Lionrider, and welcome back to Roger Williams Park Zoo. We are uh, finally making our way over to an episode that I've kind of been dreading for quite a bit now, um, and that is the Barnyard episode. So I technically probably could have split this, this episode into probably three or four parts, but in the interest of time and, you know, just kind of consistency within the series, like, I felt like I didn't want to dwell multiple episodes on just a petting zoo um just for the sake of the series so this episode was actually i believe three maybe four live streams worth of content and uh, a lot of building off camera i should mention and so yeah so basically the entire uh petting zoo area the alex anani barnyard is uh or farmyard i should say uh, was kind of a, I, I won't say difficult build, but definitely a difficult modding slash time-consuming build. So, originally, this entire barnyard, I was going to use uh, ZZ animals. So, ZZ, another, you know, uh, Planet Zoo creator, makes all their little plastic animals and stuff. I was just going to use all of their animals. But then I got to thinking and I'm like, eh, you know, it'd be kind of weird if I use, you know, like there's some bigger animals like the alpacas and the goats. Probably could make some actual animals out of that. And then when I made the alpacas and goats, I was like, well, I might as well make the donkey. Well, I might as well make the pig. And then a fellow content creator, uh, Leaf, uh, and fellow Rhode Islander, I should mention, has uh, sort of like, I, I guess, made a... We had this unofficial partnership where it's not really uh, an official partnership, but we kind of indirectly made a petting zoo pack at the same time. So while I made animals like the goat, alpaca, pig, and um, do uh, donkey, he uh, went ahead and made the Rhode Island red chicken as well as the sheep and cow. So, uh, while technically this farmyard no longer has cows, we kind of got rid of them back in the day when we uh, made the new barnyard in the new, in the new master plan. Uh, we basically kind of uh, have sort of just released all of our petting zoo animals at the same time. So, if you want, I'll have a link on Nexus and we will have all of my mods for uh, this build. So, the pig, the alpaca, the donkey, and the goats. And then, if you want, I can probably do a little mod spotlight, and I want to kind of go over Leaf and I's animals all in one big kind of farmyard animal spotlight. Because uh, I've been doing a lot of the mod spotlights lately. But uh, let's just kind of get into today's build. So, today, uh, the build was, like I said, the farmyard. So, the farmyard, for the most part, is pretty straightforward. So... When I did my kind of rough map out of the entire area of the rest of the map, so when I did like the, ma the face of the rainforest map out and stuff, I basically drew a perfect outline of all of the pens and stuff. And you can kind of see that with the green bamboo in the background. And so literally all I had to sort of do was just replace it with the appropriate fence type. So in most cases, it was either this type of fence, which is basically your standard kind of wooden picket fence. Uh, in the backdrop. Uh, the back ones are painted white. Some of the side ones are more of a tannish wood color that you'd normally find. And then the normal, uh, you know, smaller uh, wooden railings and stuff are pretty standard in most uh, stables and ranches and stuff. And basically they're just, uh, some of them have mesh fencing and stuff. So I basically would go in with the mesh fencing and then kind of overlay it with some of the actual wood. So uh, that's basically uh, what I did right there was the guinea hog habitat. Nothing super crazy. For a while, I was trying to figure out what size I wanted the barn and stuff. But, um, you know, I think the guinea hog habitat really doesn't have anything crazy. And that sort of goes for most of these animals. So right now, I am working on the alpaca habitat. So the alpaca habitat is uh, one of the uh, bigger habitats, even though it only has three animals. But technically, it has four. So I have one slight inaccuracy in this barnyard. So when the farm first was created, it only had alpacas in one pen, and then the pen I'm creating right now had the miniature donkey. That has since changed where the miniature donkey is now alongside the alpacas in the same pen. And we now have uh, a, a type of sheep. I'm, I'm uh, kind of drawing a blank on what the type of sheep it is. Um, I think it might just be like Shetland or something. But um, basically it's a type of sheep. And uh, so I didn't make that mod, but that, that 
it was just in the interest of time. I already made four animals. Didn't want to make all the individual stuff like the bunnies and the chickens. Though, like I said, Leaf went ahead and made the chickens anyway, so I might plop those in. So, uh, past that, we are just kind of bouncing around. And uh, now I am working on the goat habitat, which I... I will say the goat habitat I went a way crazier with than I thought, because the goat habitat is pretty basic. It's very much a, you know, standard, you know, sand pit with a single climbing frame and a couple of shelters and stuff, but I went ham. Uh, so you're also seeing right now the kind of, you know, a weird transition period, and that is because the game crashed at that point. So, what I just built, the little shelter and stuff, literally, uh, I, I lost that file. That was, I, I think it was just someone in my chat said, hey, can you put in the goats? Can you put in the goats? And Roger Williams at this point is a rather taxing map. So, to run the game with high graphics, animals, recording, streaming, all at once, it basically just fried my computer. And I have a pretty beefy computer. Um, but yeah, it just didn't like it at all. So it crashed the game. I lost only about 15 minutes of progress. So it wasn't that big of a deal. And so I, you can just see, I basically just redo it very shortly. Um, I wanted to make a custom climbing frame for the goat. So I made them out of East Asian wooden planks, you know, my favorite plank in the game. And, uh, right here, this is probably the thing I'm most proud of. And I'm going to have this also linked in the description. And that is my, uh, petting zoo kettle corn feeder. So... Uh, you, you find this at a lot of petting zoos, um, and even Southwicks has them at their uh, deer forest. But basically, it's just corn dispensers. You basically put in, like, a quarter, and you'll get, like, a ton of corn. Like, basically, like, corn kernels that you can then just feed to the animals. And uh, usually, in most cases, I'd say the animals go crazy. <laughs> and so, I wanted to do it because I didn't see anything on the workshop similar to it. And I think it's a super useful thing because it's very common in m many petting zoos and stuff. So I decided to make everything custom. Now, the real thing that was interesting is I was trying to figure out what the best piece to use for individual corn pieces were. And I think what I ended up settling on was gutter pieces. And so I basically used a mixture of uh, the glass panes to get the, you know, transparent glass nature of it. Uh, a couple of East Asian wooden planks. And then I just perfectly kind of squeezed together all of the gutter pieces to be individual pieces of corn and so you can see me there i'm like okay well this is going to be snug but i can try it and so what i did was i basically just took the gutter pieces just kind of maneuvered it and then just um i, I just shoved it in i like right here you can see me i'm trying to experiment with what the best option for corn is i was like do i want to use the brackets do i want to use the uh the new 2D full stops. I actually made an air of corn for Dracula Park Zoo back in the day. So I was like, ooh, do I just want to use that actual corn? But I went to my go-to, which is always gutter pieces. Um, so I just basically made a square of gutter pieces and stuck them in there. And wouldn't you know, it looks like a corn dispenser. And then I actually used a white gutter piece to actually act as the little like kind of lever that you actually pull the corn out of after you dispense the actual kernels uh so i actually really like this like i said i'll show it on the workshop i have a couple of uh blueprints that i made for this build in this uh blue or uh, on the workshop right now and uh so what am i doing right now so i am continuing on to the actual goat habitat and uh i'm trying to think of like if i have any crazy farmyard stories about roger williams uh because the last time i went like we rarely go to the farmyard, so that's the big thing, is there's two areas of the zoo that I'm familiar with, but I rarely go to, and that is uh, the Alex and Arnie Barnyard and the Children's uh, Playground, or Hasbro's Big Backyard, whatever. Uh, so much so that I actually have Leaf, like I said, that content creator before, he's going to be working on that. So much like how Haribo, um, which I want to give a shout out to, uh, I know I mentioned this on my stream, but I want to give him a shout out here because his build is sort of going to be in the background of this episode and you're going to be like, wait, who did that? Uh, Haribo is an amazing creator. You can go check out his link in the description. I'm going to be shouting out a lot of people in this episode. Uh, and he basically built the entire administration building and he did a perfect job. So I want to thank him so much. Uh, you can go check out his YouTube channel, I'll link it. Um, he's going to work on probably uh, his Missoula Zoo series, uh, which is an amazing, amazing, highly detailed zoo. 
And so he did a great job with the administration building, and so I want to shout him out. And so similar to Haribo, who worked on that, I'm going to send uh, Leaf to work on the uh, Hasbro's Big Backyard playground area for Roger Williams. Just because I have very, very little interest in doing so, and any help on Roger Williams to just get this to completion would be great. Because I want to focus on some stuff like, obviously, Face of the Rainforest is the big thing, the uh, Wetlands Trail, and I just need to update some of these, like, signs and stuff that we made early, uh, early into the zoo. Um, and uh, speaking of signs, you can see I'm basically making just Goron-style signs for the goats in the actual zoo. So I made little signs for each of the individual goats, which is uh, technically accurate because we have those in the thing. Um, it was just very difficult, obviously, with only one gender of goat, since the Outads used the other ones, uh, to get all of the skin variants. So I basically ended up getting one Anubian goat skin variation that is kind of, uh, I, I would say a pretty neutral goat texture. It's got some red, some white, and black, uh, basically three of the most prominent colors with goats. So, um, I just tried to, uh, match that. And so when you make a herd of them, it actually, weirdly enough, doesn't look that crazy. So that's actually a pretty good thing about it. So uh, just continuing on, like I said, I'm working on making a very, very accurate representation of the gate and stuff. And so in doing so, I basically just recreated it plank by plank. I could have, I wanted to originally just use some of the default wooden pieces. I instead decided, no, I'm going plank by plank. And it took a bit, but you know, I, I decided to do it as close as I could within the limitations of Planet Zoo. Um, so like I said, farmyard stories. Uh, so the last time I went to the zoo, it was in the middle of winter and uh, the alpacas were trying to mate. And uh, then a squirrel got into the habitat and uh, then uh, it scared off the donkey and the donkey started jumping into the alpacas and it was going crazy because apparently everything is scared of squirrels and then the squirrel ran around the habitat a bit more and then that's about it <laughs> I, w I wish you know it was like oh I, here's the deep lore of the farmyard and stuff but um which i can kind of talk about the original farmyard because i remember it back in the day you will not find any pictures of it except except for the exterior of it on zoo chat and maybe some top-down views of the old layout but actual individual things really don't exist anymore so b back in the old days <laughs> before we got the brand new barnyard and stuff uh this was right next to the humboldt penguin enclosure and we basically had like a few different types of animals that we no longer have so one of the big ones was the the cows or whatever so we had these big black cows they were kind of like aurochs almost like they were like weird cows with like curved bull horns but they were like females and like or they might have been males i'm not even sure but they were they weren't like hostile like a bull would be but um they were they had big horns and stuff and they're not like a watusi or anything they were like i'll try to find a picture of what those cows look like but uh they were really cool and um i kind of miss them because the new farmyard just is goats and i mean the alpacas are cool but it's goats and sheep so pretty standard stuff um but like i said i can't really even bet an eye because at the end of the day that's essentially what they had originally so uh with, with like i said with the exception being they also had cows um, the only thing that I didn't like is in doing so to make this habitat bigger, we got rid of penguins. So that was kind of the big loss. But in, in retrospect, the penguin habitat was nothing to really, you know, praise or anything. It was not a very great penguin habitat. And, uh, we're getting penguins again, very shortly. We're losing zebras to get them, but we are getting penguins back. So that'll be cool. Um, right now I am working on kind of a... Uh, I, I wanted to get some of the smaller details on some of these side profile areas. So, uh, <laughs> and this is the, the big claim to fame that I did. So, uh, you're probably wondering what this rhino statue is. And it was roughly for the sizing of how big I wanted these cow signs to be. So, even though, like I said, we don't have actual cows at the zoo anymore. Um, we do have these kind of 2D, or I, I guess they're technically 3D, but they're big cutouts of 
cows that are sort of 3D because they have they have three dimensional legs, but the rest of the cow is just flat. And we have two big statues like this. So we have a black and white one and a brown and white one. And so the black and white one is what I'm working on right now. And then literally I just dye it. So if you see me, I'm basically just using primitive art shapes and I'm basically just following the reference images that I had on my phone. And I am literally just going piece by piece and just trying my best to get it as accurate as possible. Unfortunately, within the context of Planet Zoo, I made it a little too large. So like I said, I was going for the size of the rhino. I went a little too big with it. And so in retrospect, I was like, oh, it looks so good, but it's slightly too big. And, it, and, like, and that's what hurts the most is it's a little too big. So it's not like it's crazy or anything. It's just slightly too big, but it's able to fit. So I was able to fit it in and I'm like, yeah, it's close enough. Like instead of like redoing the whole cow and stuff, I'm like, it's actually pretty, pretty close. And it's not like it's super crazy that it doesn't fit at all or anything. Um, so I think this is about the time we cut to a new stream. So this was probably the last stream I did on the barnyard area. Um, you probably can't even see Haribo's administration building yet. I think that was its own stream, but, um, what we are working on here is just basically the the back half of the barnyard area there's barely any animals in it there's technically a chicken coop and a bunny habitat but uh the rest of it is basically it's almost like modeled like a park like a children's park or something like um very bright colors very homely kind of like a you know, oh, it's like grandma's house, you know, there's a little, like, you know, bench on the porch, and there's, like, you know, benches and gardens, and, you know, it, like, it's a nice little atmosphere, but it's, uh, there's nothing really over here, so it's literally just empty space, and this is the area that, like I said, the actual penguin habitat was, so this area in particular is where the penguin habitat, and, uh, going back a little bit farther, the Patagonian cavi or Patagonian Mara, if you will, as well as the Arctic Fox were originally kept. But, you know, we've, you know, kind of gotten rid of all of that. We used to have, like, an unofficial Arctic area, and that was sort of what the seal, polar bear, and penguin habitat was. It was sort of an Arctic Fox. It was this pseudo-Arctic area of the, of the zoo. But over time, we just kind of stripped away at it more and more until it was just... Uh, at this point, just a seal habitat that they count as part of the North America section. And since Bubba is probably not going to be around for too, too much longer, and we're getting sea lions already, that habitat is probably going to just fully integrate with the uh, North America section, and we are getting bighorn sheep where he is. So, um, basically, you know, I don't think we're ever going to see a tundra area again, um, just because I don't imagine us getting arctic foxes or polar bears back or anything like that because and the new penguins we're getting are going to go with california sea lions um so i'm guessing it's going to be more like a tropical uh coastal area and i think so we we might we might be getting humboldt's back um but i think african penguins are probably more likely Though, it'd be cool if we got, like, you know, Humboldts, because they're, they're more rare, even even though African are kind of, or, um, I should say Humboldts are very common in zoos, uh, they're technically still more rare than African penguins, so, um, that, that is sort of a nice thing. Uh, I want to comment on this, because I was checking on the workshop, apparently no one's made a mailbox in this game, so I just made a mailbox. I think it's a good mailbox. I should probably upload it to the workshop in retrospect, because... I, I, there's no no mailboxes in the game. And I guess it makes sense, because no one's really making a, like, suburban house or anything, <laughs> but, um, I don't know, it was just, like, a small little prop where I'm like, huh, no one's made a mailbox, huh? And, uh, yeah, so I just thought I'd, th I'd throw it out there and just make it quick. Uh, so we're kind of wrapping up this episode soon. Uh, and then next episode, we are going to eventually get to really the meat that you've all been waiting for. The people on my live stream have been loving it and stuff. Uh, and so, spoiler alert, since I've been already recording them, they might be out faster than this last episode was. <laughs> um, but that is Face of the Rainforest. So we are finally starting that. And uh, even in some of the end clips, you might be able to even take a sneak peek at, you know, what the building is and stuff. 
But, um, I think that that should be a fun, fun little series and stuff, because, you know, I'm probably going to go on some tangents about it. <laughs> I'm probably, I like the building, but I have some uh, choice words with some of the decisions of that building. Um, and I have a couple of fun stories and stuff, so I, I think those episodes will be, you know, worth the wait and stuff. I know people have been asking for the Rainforest building since probably the very, very beginning of this series. They were like, you doing the Rainforest building? Yep, I will be doing the Rainforest building. And, uh, it, that will probably be a three to four part miniseries. So, um, prepare for that. So the next few episodes are probably... Probably going to be closer to World of Adaptations, where I do several episodes on one subject. Um, but yeah, so past that, like I'm just making a couple of the slight touch-ups to make this area kind of uh, just feel nicer. I added some like bushes and trees and foliage and, you know, the, the usual, oh, gotta love the foliage, because... <laughs> That's, you know, literally in all zoos in this game. I remember early, early on into the game, I would always be like, I'm working, working on fence work and foliage and stuff. And it was like a special thing at the time. But now in retrospect, it's like, of course, like everyone does that. It's literally what makes a zoo a zoo. And so um, I do want to comment on this. So this area or whatever back here is uh, technically the, the chicken area and the bunny habitat. So... As you can see, they are very well hidden, and I don't blame people for usually missing these animals altogether because they're hidden so far in the back. <laughs> um, they are not easy to see at all. Um, and that basically is it, if I'm not mistaken. I don't really, yeah, I might be like co covering up some of the paths and stuff. The pathing path was kind of a pain for this entire build, I'm not gonna lie. And uh, yeah, past that, I'm just literally just kind of wrapping it up. I'm just filling in the, the tree line and stuff. And uh, between that and the seal habitat. But there we go. So I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. And I hope you guys enjoy all the animal mods and all the blueprints that I have on the workshop. And uh, as always, thank you for watching Roger Williams. And I will see you guys in the next video.